Alright everybody, welcome back to Dredge. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and go follow me on Rumble for more videos. Uh, actually, I actually need to go to Encyclopedia. Stellar Basin. What do we not have? We do not have the Hammerhead Shark and the Spiny Lobster. So, Spiny Lobster, yeah, that's currently being worked on by these dudes. We need to go find the Hammerhead Shark, which lurks at uh, what time period? Day and night with a rod. Yeah, I have no clue how much money it sells for, because apparently I've only ever thrown them away. I've never sold a single one. So I can find them day and night, oceanic water, all that jazz. Friends will grab things, I do need them. Because, you know, I'm trying to 100% this game, man. It's, it's a good game. And in case you guys are wondering, when's the Story Explained video coming out, Noah? Well, it's coming out soon, actually. I've almost finished the script. And, yeah, yeah that's about all I need to say. I've almost finished the script, just uh, about one to two pages left to uh, complete the entire story. And then I, I am not including the Pale Beyond in this. The Pale Beyond will be its own separate small video that's going to be like five minutes long. I mean, I could include it in, but then it might take a little bit longer because it turns out it takes longer to write words down to make sense in a coherent sentence than it does to just say random things. Because none of these are... None, 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 none of my videos have a script or a plan or it would take years for me to produce this many videos. If I had a script, I wouldn't be releasing videos as often as I am. Alright. You know, th th this game just lost, like, all of its fear factor right after, like, I started being good at the game. Like, as soon as I started getting, like, okay at the game, I just lost most of the fear I had. And I think a giant monster would do great for making tons of fear. The Leviathan was scary, but that's only because I didn't know when I was when it was gonna kill me. Okay, I'm insane now. That's cool. Remember, all we need is one aberration. All right, that's it. I'm gonna use atrophy on the next one I see. In case you didn't know, XP is pretty much the best way to get, um... Aberrations, but it, like, depletes the fishing spot forever. Or something like that. I do need to banish more threats. So can I banish... that tornado? I'm gonna go on a limb and say, maybe. I can't banish for tornado. Cool. And there we go. That, that was the last part I've ever banished. That's cool. Reduce stress. Hopefully this- because like, well, I, I just recorded a Darkest Dungeons 2 video and it was pretty glitchy, so I hope this one isn't glitchy too. If it is, then I'm rebooting my computer. Which I honestly should have just done in the first place, because it's getting glitchy. Not sure what it is, but just BAM! Started being glitchy as soon as I lo lo loaded into Dark Ascent 2. Should have known right then and there. Because honestly, I bet this one's gonna come out glitchy too. Because, like, I don't see these glitches. It's just in the recording software and in the video. And in fact, sometimes it's... No way, wait, I was gonna use Atrophy. And there we go. It is rotting, which is the one downside of using that, uh, ability is it does not get you money. It just gets you operations, right? The gazing shark. Huge, I don't even know how to say that, eyes move about in the large fleshy stalks, siphoning energy from its body. Its search is not over. 
I love these, like, just little bits of, like, uh, lore sprinkled out throughout the fish. But my question is, what is actually causing these aberrations? As we all know, there's something radioactive down here in this pit. And it's either that thing down there or something underneath it that caused the, that caused the radiation. So is this thing... Oh my goodness, I, I think I completed the entirety of Stellar Basin. Now I just have to pick up all this and ship it over to the new location. Because let me let me check the uh, encyclopedia. Stellar Basin. Yep. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. That's very good. I did it. That's all Stellar Basin. Next, we're going on to the Twisted Strand. Wow, I didn't expect to do it that fast. I, I thought the Hammerhead Shark would at least take some time, but nah. Now it's time to sell this fish, make a bit of money. And then put everything, and I mean anything that's possible, away. I actually think I can fit one more. I made it perfectly so I can fit one more piece of wood in there, All right. So now I want to actually retrieve this, as I no longer need it, here. It's cool, just I, I kind of wish there was another ability added in, but there wasn't. Honestly, a DLC is kind of a disappointment. I mean, I, yeah, I'd still buy the DLC, you know. I love the game, but just... It, it, it could have been better, the DLC, honestly. I'm a very honest person when it comes to criticizing things. And honest, and I'm, I'm being 100% honest here, they could have done way better from what they've, they've, they've done a lot better before. So I just don't understand why they didn't do as good for this DLC. With the rest of their game being like a masterpiece. But then again, Team, um, Team Fortress 2, no. Team 17 just makes really good games. Like, um, I think they're behind Frostpunk, but I don't remember. They might be. Uh, they're behind Killer Frequency, which was a good game. It's just after the first time you play it, it kind of loses all interest, as there's nothing else to do. Giving it almost no replayability. Other than going through three times in a row to get all achievements. I do not see a really good way I'm going to fit all this in. Yeah, I'm going to have to make a second trip. Or I could just leave this here. I think I'm going to go if I'm just going to leave that there. Now, I'm actually pretty sure that um, Stellar, Stellar Basin and... Yeah, Twisted Strand are on opposite sides. So, I'm just... All the one thing I actually do like is how they made it on the map here, like this. Like, I think that's cool. So, I'm going to actually warp, teleport, uh, manifest back to base. Also, I'm also going to real quick discuss something about um, Darkest Dungeons and Darkest Dungeons 2. Darkest Dungeons 2 is a rogue light, if you ask me. If you ask me what genre it is, I would tell you it's a rogue light. As it's more light on the um, rogue aspects of it. Because, like, yeah, sure, it has permadeath, but you'll see the characters again after the run. The original Darkest Dungeons, you may see multiple duplicates of the character, but you'll never see that one character again. They're dead once they're dead. That's it. Ah, uh, great, this dude again. I'm just gonna banish him. Look, and I'm pretty sure that monster was added in Pale Reach, as I've never seen him before until I actually got the DLC. But as soon as I got the DLC, I got it. But I, I really wish 
I know I've said this like multiple times now, but there was some colossus monster beneath the waves. Because like, look, right here, this is about 90 feet deep. Get like a colossus monster. Come on. Make it like lurk at anything below 100 feet deep. That way you'll, you'll, you could either dodge it in the shallows, because it won't go near you if you're too far away. And it will cause you stress and try to swipe at you. I call it stress, I know it's called panic, but I've been playing too much Darkest Dungeons. And now, it's gone. The monster. Rest till dawn. And then we're gonna see which fish we're going after first and what things we need to do. And actually, there is one unfortunate thing we need to do. We need to get rid of the Radiant Trawl Net and drop the silver plate into the ocean. For good luck, totally. So, fix everything, please. We're gonna go again back to the shipyard. We need the... Oh yeah, I forgot, we actually have a trawl net for that area, ice area. It's the Silt Filtering Trawl Net. Which unfortunately lose a bit of our aberration bonus, but it's okay. Now, is there anything I have in storage I can use? Can I use this in anywhere? No. I'm trying to find ways I can maximize. Um, what is it called? I'm trying to find ways I can maximize how much um, aberration bonuses I get. So wait, where does this make... It's here and here, that'd be great, because then I can actually install something that's way better than this. Also, I wanted to do some research here. Research. We're gonna, uh... Are we going after engines, I think it was? Or was it nets? Not nets. We've done almost all the rods. We're gonna go for engines. Yeah. Speaking of engines, is there any way we can go any faster? Because, like, I kind of wish there was an aberration version of one of these engines. Like, I know the engine you start with, which you cannot throw overboard. You cannot sell. You're forced to keep it for all eternity. Why do I even have this anymore? This tungsten floodlight. Um, like, I know that's sort of an aberration, sort of. As it's sort of, like, explained to be one, kind of. I can't sell these to you. No, I can't. It's in fishing, right? No. Where can I... Can I sell you these at the fish market? Yes, I can. I'd rather sell it than dump it. There we go. I sold my fish. No, I wanted to sell this. Right. Yeah, but yeah, th this game definitely did you lose um, all the sort of fear I had. Very quickly. Okay, so we're looking for... We already got the gray mackerel. We already got the whatever that is. We need the sergeant fish, which is found by trawling and rod. At daytime only, we need the operation of it. Daytime, nighttime only, rod... Uh, okay, so horseshoe crab, um, anywhere between zero and ten meters deep, and giant mud crab. Okay, so we want to put it at exactly six meters deep to try to catch as many aberrations as possible. So let's go do that. We just need to be six meters deep. I'm guessing somewhere in the outside area, right? Like yeah, right here. Um, perfect area. I was there for like a split second. It said six meters deep. I'm just gonna go in. Because remember, for every one meter, I'm pretty sure. That's three feet. Alright, now I can start fishing. Make more doing no, you need to equip something mangrove, and I do have it right here. This rod right here. 
mechanics of brutality bonds to three gouging fr flying hooks, an ungodly fishing device, is mangrove. And I found it in the mangrove swamps in that one episode. I mean, I need the aberration of this, so why not? It's not an aberration, just toss it back. And I miss. I still try to get trophies if possible, because you know it's just cool. And actually, there's like almost no monsters here now, if I remember correctly. Because I killed them all. I mean, I already caught you. The gray mullet. Actually, I don't need to be dumping these. I can use them as bait. Remember correctly, these guys were real good bait. But I'll say, playing this game for the first time was amazing. But yeah, the, the, the Dredge Story Explained video is almost uh, ready. I also, um, it might release tomorrow, it might release the day after that, or the day after that. I'll try to do it soon. Keyword is try, right? Might not be able to do it. Might get lazy and decide to not make a script that day and just like, just forgo doing it because I'm bored. Deciding, why make a script when I can just sit around and do nothing? Don't know why, that's like my exact thought process. Like, why make, my, why, why do the script? But like, I need to do the script. Otherwise, I'll never make a single point. And it's kind of hard to remember all this at once. So, yeah, definitely need to write the script. But yeah, this is definitely like a relaxing game. I'm pretty sure there's even a mode once you like unlock the camera or something, or maybe there's just a mode unlocked from default just playing the game. Is that um you can put it on like peaceful mode and like there's just no enemies. And you can really just play like a relaxing fishing game. Okay, there we go. We unlock the twisted eel. I want to. I want to read the description. All right. Endlessly pulling away, but torn apart, they would surely perish. Two spiteful si siblings splitting at the seam. Well, I actually want to go to the encyclopedia and see. Is there any other? No, that's the only one. Yeah, there is two for the gar. Which, now it's daytime again. Yeah, we need the Sergeant Fish. Would love to blow this up, but I'm afraid I can't, because I'll never remember to bring explosives. I don't really need more wood. What I need right now is metal. Oh, guaranteed aberration or trophy fish? I mean, it is for the Sergeant Fish. We instantly found it, alright. The Vortex Interloper, a, sw a slow, a slow stir twists its body, stretching towards an unseen dimension. Okay, so maybe in the stellar basin then, because like I was just about to like try to say this, like, is it the radioactivity? Then I just stopped talking and what about it? Or is it the like the giant monster that appears at the end of the game? Like, is that what's causing it? And the fog. Gotta remember that, which... We still have not gotten any sort of, like... NPCs really talking about the whole fog. No remnants of the crew. Nothing. There's really just nothing going on with that. And uh, then uh, the Pale DLC just sort of, sort of ended anticlimactically and was kind of boring, but it was still good. I, like I said, it's, it's boring, but I still liked it in like the same sense. Have I even caught anything in this net? Yeah, I have. Just haven't caught anything good. All right, let me sell all this. 
So, like, you know, this is just a relaxing fishing game to play. But I, I, I really wish it was scarier, you know? You guys would probably like this game if it was scarier. Because whenever I get scared in video games, the audience just loves it, apparently. It's, it's always my most viewed videos, like, um... Benzie and the Ink Machine. Ah, well, that was a good one. That was a good one. It didn't last too long, the series. Only about five episodes, maybe six. I don't actually remember now. But, yeah, it was a good game. I would, I would definitely play that game again. And I actually will be. I'm not sure when, but I, I was thinking about 100%ing it. I'm trying to get all achievements. Like now I'm doing so in Dredge. And once I'm once I've done hundred percenting in Dredge, story explain, maybe some theory videos. I'm not sure I'll really come back to it. I might do a challenge run. I was thinking before like doing a challenge run of no lights. Before I realized how easy it was. Then I was like, maybe no sleeping before I realized how easy it was. To just sail around, even with the monsters on the prowl trying to kill me. It's super easy just to sail away from them. You don't have to deal with the enemies if they can't catch you. Don't know what this is, but I probably don't have the aberration of it. it looks like a catfish. Which doesn't make any sense, but it's a cat doing in water. I'm also going to get rid of these. And this, as I have no use for it. Oh man, I messed up. I've been doing really bad at this one. Oh my goodness. Oh my. There we go, we got a uh, Nightwing Catfish. Ah, uh, hooked. Whatever that says, seek out prey in the Twisted Mangrove. At once, sluggish fish give haste upon crimson fins. That reminds me, I was actually thinking about playing Totally Accurate Battle Simulator soon. On the channel. The biggest tree is where this guy li uh, is at. This is the, the biggest tree where is, it, where, is where the airman lives. And like, I have many theories about these places. Like, this, these trees I actually believe to all be one type of tree. Because I remember a while back watching uh, an educational video that uh, about trees, and that actually there was one type of tree where they were all the same tree. It just came right out of the ground, the roots, when it turned into a new tree. So I was thinking, I know these aren't that type of tree, but who's to say that aren't all these roots aren't connected? Who's to say that all these trees aren't one? And the big tree is the, the, the only tree. These are all just its roots. I also have, you know, the theory about Stellar Basin. Who knows? Could have been a nuclear bomb. Would explain that, uh, the hole being there. Although the only thing I can't, uh, figure out is what time period this game takes place. Because the airman... The airman here, he, he exists. Meaning it's probably after or during, probably after, some sort of war. Pro yeah, probably after. Whatever uh, country he worked for, probably America, never came back for him. Probably everybody presumed dead. And he refuses to leave this place. Because, like, I... Like, these guys, even though they live in such a horrifying place of monsters, they all refuse to leave. Which I found quite interesting. Why do they refuse to leave constantly? They just don't leave. I'm thinking maybe the fog is keeping them here. As even though it's like just a minor element in this game, the fog, it's always there and as soon as night hits. 
wind's trying to lead me towards something. I bet it's that reinforced piece of metal I found. But then I need an explosive to get to. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I don't think I've really ever gone this way. No, nah, it's just a reinforced piece of metal. I wonder what this says. And these, these are actually really interesting. I, 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 I'll probably look up a YouTube video to see what they all say. If that's a thing. Hopefully it is, because it'd be way to make my job easier. And I kind of like it when my job's easier. I mean, oh yeah, and also the next subscriber special is going to be a 60 subscriber special. And then an 80, but the big one's going to be the 100 subscriber special. That's going to be like an actual big one. Because like every 20 subscribers is just a small milestone. 100 subscribers is going to be the big one, and then 1,000 is going to be the biggest milestone. Crocodile. I'm gonna run right into this thing. I, I go right over it. Okay. Cause I was like, does it damage me? It's like testing if there's fall damage in a game by jumping off a cliff. I'm like, does it damage me? So I ram right into it at full speed. Have I caught the aberration of this? Let me see, what, what fish is that? I probably remember, remember. Yeah, I think I have. Let me actually check the encyclopedia here. Uh, stellar base, no, Twisted Strand. Yeah, I've already got that aberration. Right now we're looking for the gar. Uh, and that's it. There's honestly not many fish here, there's just the gar. That's all we're looking for is the gar. So I'm going to sleep for three days straight once I find the exit. But honestly, I think one one thing this game really is missing other than giant colossal monster that I talked about underneath the waves about 100 feet deep. Well, actually, I think it's missing two things. First off, I mean, I know that we already have the fake out crabs that aren't real items and they attack you. But a uh, big thing we're missing, like fake island monster. Also, you ever look at one of those dredge all monster videos and you see some just like a fake monster. It's in all of them. It's used constantly. It's like just an, a, like a giant fish made out of tinier fish. But it's not a real thing in the game. Uh, like I was trying to say, like a fake out island, fake island, you know, that'd be cool. And then like the hallucinations. Um... Yeah, the giant monster below the waves. Mm. And then, like, a ghost ship. That's where the games really miss. Mm. Then again, but they probably don't want to add a ghost ship. They want to probably keep it how it is. No changes. As soon as I buy it, she's like, well, I'll buy it back at half the value. I must have damaged it or something. Alright, floating dock. I'd like to get this done, please. No. There we go. There we go. And I'd also like more space. But maybe not right now. Because there's only four extra heart cargo spaces in those areas. Versus this is two extra in those areas. Which is way easier. And I can actually get rid of some wood I have right now. Also, I'm pretty sure I have absolutely no need for these map pieces. Or any more reinforced steel. Yeah, I have no, no, I have no use for it. I'm just gonna sell it all to her. Mm. Actually, no, maybe, maybe I do. I just don't feel like I do. All right, and I, I'll, mm. I'll buy it if I really need it. I can just buy it from her for four hundred fifty dollars each. Shame only sell for one hundred and ten. Alright, this is this is my good luck trinket. I I'll I'll never sell it. I honestly wish that there was more um like side quests for the castaway as he really did nothing in the entirety of the playthrough. He just exists. 
There we go. Now you have more fishing speed and a 7% chance to catch an aberration. And now it's daytime because I spent so much time in installing things. Wait, is the net almost broken? Now it's got one day remaining. That's good enough for me. I need to empty out these the crab pots. And like, you know that that, that, that that monster you see whenever you search up uh, on YouTube, like uh, all monsters? Maybe they could add something like that into the game. Um... Yeah, maybe they, maybe they could add something like that into the game. That messes up time. So like the closer it is to day, it'll turn it back to night. The closer it is to night, the sooner it will turn to, to night. I don't know, just, just something to, to heed your prox progress. Okay, there we go, we got a... Meyer... This thing's eyes are in its hands. Reminds me of I-5 from Skylander's Trap Team. <clears throat> a lasting yellow tongue whips around a mouth of flattened teeth. Two human-like eyeballs burst between dripping claws. That sounds normal. Like a normal thing you'd see on a fishing trip. Like, I'm not sure why these people, these, 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 these folks are eating these fish. Maybe it's, it's really good. Maybe it tastes really good. Maybe it'll kill you. Like, here's an idea. Maybe you don't remember exactly where you put your crab pots. And there's a fake monster that pretends to be your crab pots. And therefore attacks you. Well, there'll be one way to figure it out. It's, it's not on the map. So if you just check the map before going up to your crab pot, you'll be able to figure out, Hey, that's not my crab pot. That is monster. Monster bad. I gotta sleep for multiple days so the fish population can uh, return and exist once more. Go oh, and fix um, $52. Man, that's insane. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna sleep for. I'm gonna sleep till day 102. Which really isn't the most interesting thing, but it, it's something. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be able to record videos again. As you know, I, I was sick. And therefore could not record YouTube videos. Very sick. Research parts, mental biome. And now I can actually research. That's just how, that's how I'm gonna get all these research parts. I'm not gonna fish them out of the ocean by searching for them. I'm just gonna buy them because I'm rich. I still have two thousand dollars. Also, I keep noticing this. I'm not sure if this is a glitch in the textures, but I'll just randomly see like a shadow in the in, in the waves. But there'll never be anything of it. And also, um. Can, can, like, the people of our dredge fix that, the, the, the floating thing? You can only really see it if you turn like this. You're pointed towards over here. You can just, you're looking like this. You can't actually be looking at it. It just exists right there, and it's, it's actually really annoying. I doubt anyone from that development team actually watches my videos, but that'd be nice. Oh, wait, we got the, we got one of the fish we actually needed, the Grinning Gar. Muscular gum, huh? English. Muscular gums grow and force cracking teeth against each other. Softer flesh tears from the strain. All right, I only really need one more. I think I'll use atropy on uh, another. Am I looking for a gar again? Yeah, gar. I just need to find one of those gar locations. Here it is. And use atrophy and hope to get the fish I need. And there it is. Highly infected. The claw fin gar. Crooked talons hang from its fins. Periodically they shudder and come together, grasping like a hand. Seems normal, wouldn't you say? 
Is that all? Is that everything here? Let me check. Yep. Get everything on that page. Everything on that page. Everything on that page. We're missing. Actually, no way. I'm actually not in Twisted Strands. Here we go. Yep. Yeah, we got everything there. Everything there. We're missing the horseshoe crab aberration. And that's it. Then we can move on to Devil's Spine. Dude, I'm not sure if I'm seeing things, but I could have sworn I just saw something beneath the waves. It was that uh, stingray again. It's like it tried spawning in, but then it just couldn't. So now we play the sleeping game where we just sleep and check the crab pots and then do the painstakingly long progress of removing them all, picking them up, or not. Wraps, wisp of wraps, no, it's a clearly says wisp of yellow light flicker over the ghastly shell. A screaming skull of spinal tail. That seems normal. Alright. Wouldn't you guys say that's a normal thing you see every day in the in the local river or pond or ocean? Also, do mangrove swamps actually exist in the ocean? Like I'm actually curious now, can could could trees like this actually live in the ocean? Because this is all salt water. I don't think I didn't I don't I don't, I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but I don't think um, plants do well with salt water. But I could be wrong. Also, like a, like y'all never find one of these for a long time. These aberrations. But as soon as I catch one, count them one of them, a single one. They all of a sudden decide to all come out of hiding at the same time. And I'll catch like multiple aberrations in these pots after I've never even been able to catch one. Also, I'm planning on maybe doing some like story explain videos of games I haven't played or some lore videos of games I haven't played. And then probably actually just play those games. Alright, pick up. Also, I've heard really good things about some game called Lethal Company. Tell me if that's something you guys want to see me play. I'll probably not play it. Because it requires people to play. And I'm not playing with random people, and I don't have friends who would play the game. But you can still tell me if you guys want to see me play it. I just probably won't play it. Also, if I was to stream any game, which I'm probably never going to stream, I would probably uh, play uh, Last Train to Wormtown. Because then, then uh, fans, the people who are watching the live stream, can actually play by just getting the friend pass and then typing in a code. Man, I'm not sure how I'm going to fit all these crab pots. I know I like left one crab pot behind. Um, again, the game just does not know how to do this. Alright, now we move this here, do this, and bam, we got an extra slot there. Yeah, that, that was quick. We, we crossed off two areas in one day. Not in game day, real life. For real life. Seriously, I've only never seen one of those um, shrimp, fish, whatever, horseshoe crab special versions. And now I fished up like five of them. Did you guys see that right over there? Pretty sure that's a glitch in textures. All I know is this area is really glitchy for their textures. Probably because like the fog and maybe render distances of when it's actually rendering in everything, and when it's not. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, that's good. So now we can actually warp back home by using uh, Manifest. Back to where it all began. Uh, almost died. You know, I spent. S I s in this game, man, you hardly spend any time at the uh, minnows. You spend such a small amount of time here, but at the same time, it's like one of the most important locations of like the most lore. Every area has a bit of lore here and there, but this area has the most of it. Also, don't worry, for the last episode of this 100%ing, we're going to be doing the final two endings. As yes, there's multiple endings. There's three. The standard ending that most players get, and then the second one, and then the third. Which second and the third are basically sort of similar, except they require two different steps. Like, there's just two steps of difference between, um... Actually, no, I guess it's just one step of diff- no, two. Technically two. Two steps of difference. But you do have to talk to the mayor at Devil's Spine on the tiny island. Otherwise, it's physically, I think, impossible. Then you talk to the lighthouse keeper. Then you go talk to the collector. And that's it. Also, I kind of like this area because like the red uh, magma everywhere sort of just catches the eye temporarily, making you think there's something there when there's really not anything. But you know, it's nice to be back in the Devil's Spine. It, it, I know it was the last area we ever visited it too, but it also feels like the area where we were just there the least, other than the minnows. It's like one of the most memorable areas, but at the same time, it doesn't even feel familiar. It's like, I love this area, but it doesn't feel familiar at all. I also like how there's a ton of um, destroyed buildings everywhere. I do have actually a couple of theories about this area. Also, uh, yes, I, w I still don't know what the thing that was rising from the ocean is. If someone could just please tell me. Like, what is that thing? Does it have a name? What is it? Is it a reference to something? Like, this is a Lovecraftian game, and all I know is people discuss what Lo Lovecraft's cat's name was, or something like that. It's like one of his works, or something? Were all of these monsters his works? Or just references to them? I don't know. This is, this is too complicated. This is above my pay grade, alright? I don't get paid enough to do this. Alright, so we're gonna need the Abyssal and Adel here, I think. As we no longer need Mangrove. Or do we need Mangrove? I'm not actually sure. Sure. Uh, all I know is we no longer need this. In fact, we can probably sell this, honestly. And now we need the Lava Filter, and then... Man, so many things to do. We need to go to the actual person who can help us do this. Yeah, there is still a few more docks left in the game that I need to visit to get the achievement. I think I'll probably just start a new save file to do that one, and just look up a video on where every safe place to dock is at, and then just go to him. Um, sometimes I completely forget what's going on. My mind just goes blank, and I can't remember what was going on, or what I was going to say. Because I'm thinking about something completely different from what's actually important and going on right now. And I'm like, what's going on again? I don't even remember. Who are you people? Alright, um... It, what was... 
Dude, I remember when these fishing rods were like so expensive back in the beginning of the game, and the game was just so like fresh. The weighted line, I'm pretty sure you started with this one. Then you could buy the weighted line, flexible fishing pole. Which, the flexible fishing pole, I don't know about you, but I don't know about you guys. But if you ask me, I see a lot of similarities to the glacial lance. I'm kind of thinking that um, they sort of reuse the texture. And uh, the barbed ice rod kind of looks a bit like the versatility rod mixed with the anti-tangle line. They just put those two lines together. I'm thinking they really reused some assets and recolored it. This... Can I kind of find anything that kind of looks like this? This, I guess. Kind of just looks like the, the, the basic one. I never bought this. It's so funny. I like I bought like the Great Glacial Lance, skipped right past the Barbed Ice Hook. Skipped right past the Brittle Trawl Net, and just went straight for the Radiance one. It's funny. Alright, I need to get things situated. So first off, let's look at what can be caught here with crab pots. I'm making this video like 50 minutes long right now. Devil's Spine. Uh, this can be caught in a trawl. Trawl. Rod and trawl. Rod. Pot Devil's Spine. About 10 meters deep. Um, anything above 0 meters, you can find this spider crab. And anything below 25 meters, you can find the squat lobster. And that's it. Then, then we're actually going into the ocean's deep to catch the main things there. Then we're going back to Gale Cliffs. An area I do not have fond memories of. So 10 meters. Yeah, we just gotta put it below 10 meters to catch that fish. So I'm gonna put a few fish below 10 meters. I'll put like three here. Wait, did, is the one... Dude, like the one crab pot I don't think I have right now is the mouth of the deep. Then we're actually going to go beyond 10 meters, we're going to sail out over here and drop the rest of the crab pots over here. I'm wondering, no, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to limit uh, the amount of the different the different crabs I catch. So these three will basically just be set and catching the, the lower ones, the uh, other ones are going to be set and capturing the spider crab and the squat lobster. But anyways, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And honestly, this game is fun, man. Um, also, Pizza Tower's on sale. Uh, last time I checked. Today. So if you want to buy Pizza Tower, it's on sale. Although if you wanted to buy it, it's probably on your wish list. And if you don't check your wish list like every five hours. Or like two and a half hours, then you're crazy. And if it isn't on your wish list and you're wanting to buy it, why isn't it on your wish list? I mean, unless you're not, like, buying it off Steam. No, of course you're buying it off Steam. That wouldn't make any sense. Because maybe you were thinking about buying it, you are on the fence, and it wasn't really on your wish list. Then maybe that makes sense. But at the same time, it really doesn't. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Go watch more Dredge videos. Um, if you haven't watched the Bending and Ink Machine series, you should probably watch it. It's... I I think the Dredge viewers would probably like it. Probably. Although, actually, I realized something. Only about, like, 5% of players, 10% of players, ever complete the game. Like, after that first two acts, just people just did not play the game. So my guess is either they got stuck on puzzles, they didn't really like the game, or a lot of people bought it, but they just haven't touched it. Has even completed the first act and he has like a 73% um, fi finish rate. And almost nobody does any of those side objective, um, like train on the radios. Nobody does that. Eating all the bacon soup. Nobody does that. In fact, people do turn on the um, tapes a lot. That's because it has the most lore. Uh, do tell me if you want, want me to play Dark Revival. That bendy game. I, I probably would play it if you guys asked me to. But yeah, that's it. That'll do it for today's video. I like making videos long, because I'd rather make one long video than like three short videos. That's why I make these videos longer.